welcome back to our cottage garden in Somerset. We're at the end of July now somehow and it's been a little while since I last showed you around the garden so apologies for that. Things have been a little bit manic. Um, I've had a lot of work on and we've had a heat wave which has made it really hard to get outside and film and also we've been raising ducklings which has been super exciting but it has taken quite a lot of time. So I'm going to link to a video where you can see our ducklings hatching if you're interested in that. It's been a really really lovely process but I'm pleased now to have a little bit more time to be able to show you around the garden. So um, the last few weeks have been somewhat difficult because of the heat wave. So we had a couple of days where we were nearing about 40 degrees Celsius, uh, which is the hottest ever um, for the UK and we don't deal very well with that kind of heat. Um, in terms of how the garden managed, it was surprisingly okay. Um, so in our veg garden we use a lot of mulch which helps to keep the moisture in. Same in the polytunnel, um, but the grass has gone quite patchy and bits of it are looking a bit dead. So bear with us while uh, we're recovering from that, but we don't water the grass, we just leave it to get on uh, as it is and it will be back looking good in no time at all. So this time in the garden is really lovely. We have a lot of pollinators. We've got butterflies and bees absolutely everywhere. I'm hoping I can film some to share with you. Um, we've got a really lovely buddleia that's in flower and it has gone over quite quickly just because of how hot and sunny it's been. But there are still a few flowers left on that and it's looking lovely. Our lavender has also been really popular with bees. I can see a lot of bees on that now, so I'm going to show you some close-ups of that too. Uh, and then also our lamb's ear plants are currently in flower and the bees are loving those. So everywhere you look, there's a lot of bee action, which is really lovely to see. And then in this part of the garden around me, um, not too much going on at the moment, but our hydrangeas are flowering. I have been moving some things around a little bit in this part of the garden. Um, I'm still learning about how the light falls and which areas are shaded. And as the trees have gotten bigger in the garden, we've ended up with a lot more shade than I anticipated. So I have added some hydrangeas to this side, um, knowing that they don't mind a little bit of shade. Hopefully those will um, settle in really nicely. But this one next to me here is a really mature plant. And this was here when we arrived and it's looking really good. So hopefully the others will follow suit and be like this one. But apart from that, this area of the garden is not too exciting. So I'm going to show you um, what's going on further up the garden. My last video, I showed you um, the progress in our dahlia bed and things are still slow growing, but we're getting there. So I can see three or four um, buds on these now. Hopefully we'll get some flowers soon. And I'm really hoping that these um, develop into bigger plants so that I can lift them and use them again next year. Um, I've tried all sorts of things with dahlias and I haven't come up with a good rhythm of um, growing them myself yet. So this is probably my second or third year of trying. Um, I've tried leaving them in the ground because we do have quite mild winters and then giving them a nice thick mulch. They do survive the winter, but then the slugs just decimate them as soon as they start growing. So I think for me, probably the best strategy is to lift them and replant them as I've done here, um, but they might not be getting the best amount of sunlight in this bed. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but our perennial kale cuttings are doing really well. They look like they've all rooted and started to grow. So those will be ready to transplant into our vegetable garden and some of them are going to the allotment as well. I'm going to probably keep doing this because I think they're such a good plant to grow. I just want to share them with everyone. So I'll probably give some to my sister, um, maybe to her friends as well if they want to grow some. Um, it seems quite wasteful. The more you grow perennial vegetables, you start thinking about why we grow so many from seed and treat them as annuals and discard them when we could be leaving them in, in the soil, um, having them set their roots down and having that be beneficial for the fungi in the soil and to uh, disturb the soil less. So I'm really keen on growing perennial vegetables. I know I say this in every video, but I do absolutely love it. So that's this bed. Um, the nasturtiums are really small as well. I did plant those very late, but um, they are putting on some growth. So uh, we'll see how they get on, but not expecting great things from those this year. Behind me, the uh, generous gardener rose is doing amazingly. I did take quite a bit off this a couple of weeks ago because it had put on so much new growth um, and it's sending up more and more flowers each week. It's beautiful and it's in quite a shady position, so it's doing really well. And I think probably this area of the garden is my favorite uh, at this time of year. There's not too much going on, but I think it's quite pretty and subtle. Uh, and it's just nice to look at. So yeah, this is my favorite part. Let's move up to the next bit of the garden. So as I mentioned uh, last time, this part of the garden is a little bit gappy at the moment, but the things that we do have are doing really well. Um, so you'll notice we've got loads of this lamb's ear plant that's still flowering, has a really long flowering season, um, really good for the bees. So we're glad to have that. Um, I did mention before, I want to start adding some more plants that will flower in late summer into this area. So I'm hoping to get some um, Japanese anemones, um, 
maybe some more tree mallows, that sort of thing to add in there. I am going to go to the garden centre in a couple of weeks time, so stay tuned for another video where I will eventually fill out the gaps in these borders. Um, but I'm feeling very grateful for the things that we do have at the moment. And these allium seed heads are still looking amazing now they're starting to dry. I'm definitely going to always grow alliums for the really long flowering season and for how nice the seed, head looks, seed heads look afterwards. Um, I have added the tree mallows in now. So there's two tree mallows. They're a petite tree mallow with white flowers with a pink center, and they're called Barnsley Baby. They ha also have a really long flowering season. So as the years go by, they should be a helpful thing to have in these borders that are a little bit on the bare side this time of year. The um, clematis looks like it might have finished flowering now. Um, I can see there's a lot of seed heads on there. I'll give it another dead head, see if it um, sends any more flowers up, but that may be finished for the year now. Um, and then we've got these perennial sunflowers that are on the way, um, still not quite ready to flower yet. Um, probably the most exciting thing in this part of the garden are the plums. So there's a really big plum tree here um, that's covered in plums that are about ready to harvest. I have actually checked them and we do have plum moth this year. So what that means is when you open up the plum, there's a little larvae inside, which will eventually grow into the moth. Um, puts you off eating them but Aaron says if we get a bucket of water and empty the plums into the bucket of water then the larvae will crawl out and float to the top we can skim them off and then the plums will be good for eating but if that's something you've experienced I'd like to know how you deal with it and if you do eat the plums when that happens I know you can set traps for them in the spring but that's not something we've ever done um, we just kind of <laughs> play it by ear and see how it goes and um, we have a lot of bats in the garden that might help control the moth population but obviously it hasn't been enough this time um, but yeah advice on that will be greatly appreciated while we figure out how best to um, use the plums because we do get a lot of them um, we have about I don't know 20 to 30 trees um, probably five or six of those are really mature so they give us a lot of plums uh, we end up with kind of a massive um, trug full of plums each year so probably is good to um, make use of them maybe by making a jam or something um, we've also got this perennial kale uh, in this bed which is looking amazing it was getting really tall so I did take the top off it and now it's gone into a more um, bushier kind of plant um, we don't eat too much of that one but I have taken a lot of cuttings of it so we will have a, a better supply so we can start to eat more and more of that one um, tend to use the leaves for something like a pesto um, and then we've also got some sweet peas in this bed that are flowering at the moment and I'm very grateful for those because there's not too much else in flower. They're actually a perennial sweet pea that I planted the year we moved in um, so they're three years old now and this is the first year that I've seen them flower. They didn't flower for the first two years which was strange but they're amazing. They're bright pink um, and pleased to see those back here again. We've got a um, small hydrangea i can't remember the exact variety but i bought it because it was compact so it shouldn't take up too much space in this bed um, and we've also got loads of hollyhocks oh and some echinacea um, and i did plant the echinacea about two years ago and i heard that it doesn't it's supposed to be a perennial but for us only one of the plants has come back and i think i planted about six of them um, yeah, and only one of them's come back. And I don't know if that's because I dug them up when I was planting bulbs by accident, or if they're just not a very good repeat flower. But they are so pretty, and there's something that I'd like to have more of in the garden, but um, I gravitate more towards perennials just for the ease. So um, I might try again with those, who knows? And then um, the hollyhocks. And we have quite a few hollyhocks up here now. Um, we started off with a couple of black plants um, and as they've self-seeded, they are changing color to more of a soft pink, which is much more to my taste. So that's really exciting. I'll show you some close-ups of those. And that's more or less it um, until we pad out the gaps in this bed. But please stay tuned um, in a couple of weeks time. I'm really looking forward to doing that. And now I'm gonna show you the vegetable garden. Now we're in our vegetable garden and I've added a couple of things here um, in the last few weeks. So I sowed some French beans in the gaps in the soil and those have got beans on them now. So I'm gonna harvest those later today. And then I also added some Jerusalem artichokes to that bed. Um, and the aim is that eventually that bed will be entirely dedicated to Jerusalem artichokes. And they're like a tuber type vegetable. So you would eat the roots um, as sort of like a roasting vegetable. But the cool thing is they flower as a sunflower. So I don't know why we don't grow more of those. Um, they were something that I hadn't really thought about growing until I went to the garden center the other day. So I picked up a couple of those. They look like they will flower quite soon um, if they settle in well. 
And obviously we need to check that we like the taste of them as well, because that's really important with growing vegetables. But I'm excited to grow those. Um, and in the meantime, the spare space in that bed will be used for things like French beans. And then I also added a rose called Eden to that bed with the aim of climbing it over the arch in the centre. And then aside from that, things are as they usually are in this part of the garden. Um, it's dedicated to perennial veg, so things don't change all that much. Um, we've got the Jerusalem artichoke on one side, the globe artichoke on the other, which is looking a little bit small, but thankfully it did survive the heat wave. I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't because it's a new and a young plant to us. And miraculously, the Swede have uh, recovered from the slug damage as well, because they had some really bad slug damage a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they were eaten right back down to the ground but somehow they've regrown so hopefully that means we're going to have some swede later on in the season. This weekend we are actually going to be finally finishing this part of the garden. So this area we started in lockdown, it was the beginning of 2020. Uh, we never really got around to finishing it um, in the interest of time and money. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in another lot of sleepers, raise the raised beds so that they're twice the height. Then we can level off the paths in between them and then we can cover and wood chip the paths. And that will make it easier for maintaining this bit of the garden. We're also going to strim all this grass down. Um, as you may have noticed, we we don't really use a strimmer very often just because um, partly it's too heavy for me um, but also it's good for the um, insects as you might be able to hear. I can hear lots of um, crickets hopping around in this area um, but we do have the orchard behind here that we always leave the grass long so it is okay to strim back the grass here and to wood chip over the paths um, and I'm really excited to have this area look a little bit more tidy because for the last Probably the last year it's been um, overgrown and messy and not very well maintained. So tune into our next video where you'll see the transformation. But Aaron and I are going to be working on this over the weekend. Get it looking really lovely. And then we've also got the orchard, which is looking really wild and lush and overgrown, full of insects. If you walk through there, you can just hear crickets um, chirping constantly, which is really lovely. Um, the apples and pears are doing really well. We do have a fig tree that doesn't have any figs on. No idea why, because in the past, uh, you could usually see small figs on there by now. I'm not sure if it's just having a rest, um, but if anyone knows reasons why we might not have figs on the fig tree this year, do let us know. Um, and that's more or less everything that we've got going on in the garden at the moment. Hope you enjoyed this tour. This time of year is a little bit lacking compared to the other times of year, so it's definitely something that I want to work on as we go forward. Um, and I can't wait to show you um, the changes that we're going to work on over the next few weeks. So I'll see you next time.